Welcome to Find Your Way Home, my friends. I'm very excited to introduce to you two very special guests. These are the producer, Holly Carney, and the executive producer, Anne Vusick, of a new movie coming up, a Hollywood production, and we all should get very excited because this is Catholic. And since when does that happen? The movie is going to be called Between the Mountains, and some of you listening are already excited because it's about Medjugorje. Others of you are thinking, oh no, Medjugorje is condemned, it's horrible. Well, in our next show, I'm going to tell you why that is absolutely not so, because Anne Vusick and I are going to talk and refute all of these lies, misconceptions, things that have been publicized out there on the internet about Medjugorje that actually aren't true. We're going to say what the church teaches. We're going to really break that open for you. So I ask you to keep watching, suspend your doubt, because in a year, two, three, we'll see. It kind of depends on you all and the support that these lovely women and the directors get for this movie to come out into the world and to make a huge, huge difference. The time is now. The time is urgent, and I'm going to ask these lovely ladies to speak to why Medjugorje is so important right now and why this movie is so important right now as well. We feel that bringing this movie to the big screen is so important. I I have to share that I was with a friend in Louisiana who had a radical conversion watching The Passion of the Christ watching that movie. That movie changed her life. And that's part of the the ambition we have with this movie, Between the Mountains, is to speak to all people on a global scale. Christian movies and Catholic movies in Hollywood get such a bad rap. They always are looked at as lower quality or or preachy. This is not that film. Um, As I've worked on many projects, Fatima being one that was released uh, recently in 2020 and 2021, which is a remake of Warner Brothers movie of the three shepherd children in Portugal, where the Blessed Mother appeared to them for six months in 1917. We just released that major motion picture. It was produced by Marco Pontecorvo out of Italy. He did a beautiful job staying true to the Catholic faith and the Catholic truths of that apparition. And for this Medjugorje film, Between the Mountains, God has brought us the most prolific producer in Hollywood, who's done three billion in films, Lucas Foster. And he is incredible. He's a genius. He, he's a visionary. He is um, awesome to work with. He, he has a, a godliness about him and, and a righteousness where he does things correctly. And he has so much wisdom. I think, I think it's better when you, when you work on it more. And uh, in recent years, I haven't worked on a movie where I've had less than 20, 25 drafts. I mean, that would, that would be atypical for me. So uh, I don't know how other people do it. Maybe there are great filmmakers who, you know, Jim Brooks, it pops out and it's perfect and brilliant, but I, I, not for me. For me, it takes a long time to get it right. And I won't make the movie until it's right. He has done movies that I know most of you have probably seen. Man on Fire with Denzel Washington and Dakota Fanning. He's done Ford versus Ferrari with Matt Damon and all the other stars in that in that movie. I think Christian Bale is one of them. Um, he's done Mr. and Mrs. Smith with Brad and Angelina. He's did Crimson Tide way back in the day. A lot of you may have seen that. But his own passion projects that he leads on, like Between the Mountains, are completely different and, and genius and unique in their own way. Medjugorje is changing the world. And our hope and expectation is that this movie will do the same. The role of Medjugorje, when Pope John Paul said Medjugorje is hope for the world, Medjugorje is spiritual center of the world, it's because Our Lady is bringing her army to combat the darkness. And she often says that in Medjugorje, God is unveiling a plan for the world. She frequently says that. And Medjugorje is a place of such incredible graces. There are graces that are poured out in people's hearts and graces that you see just in and around the village. For example, there's so many millions of people see the miracle of the sun. Millions of people have had their rosaries turned to gold. Millions of people, myself included, have seen Our Lady in the bell towers of the church, have seen Our Lady, you know, there's a cross at the at the back of 
St. James Church, Cross Mountain. There's a huge concrete cross up there. Many miracles have been associated with that. I've seen Our Lady up there. The cross suddenly disappears, and you see the image of Our Lady up there. Today, okay, there's electricity. I have a question. Up- How do you see Our Lady? I'm just really curious about that. Yeah, so, you know, a couple of times when I looked at the cross on Cross Mountain, the cross was gone, and all of a sudden, you just see a silhouette of a, of a woman up there. It's very clear. I mean, it's, you know, I, I didn't see a face or anything, but it was very clear. It was the silhouette of a woman with a long veil, and it was, it was clear that it was the Blessed Mother. There have been many, many miracles associated with that cross. I've seen that cross spin other people have reported seeing fires on the mountain, but when they get to the top of the mountain, the, the fires are gone. People have seen the words mir, M-I-R, which is a Croatian word for peace, in the kind of between the two mountains, just written in the sky. Those are just some of the, the kind of the more supernatural, the more sensational things that happen there. But also the greatest miracles really are the great, the miracles that happen in people's lives, the millions of people that have been converted, the, the hundreds and possibly thousands of vocations that have come from there, people who've been healed, people like my friend Colleen Willard, who was healed of a, an inoperable brain tumor, who came to Medjugorje paralyzed and left with her wheelchair in Medjugorje, was able to walk on the plane herself and go home. There are countless stories like that of people whose lives have been touched and changed. It truly is a place of miracles unlike any other in the world today. And by the way, there are more physical healings, documented physical healings in Medjugorje than there are in Lourdes. That says a lot, I think. So while we were in Medjugorje, we met with so many people to do reconnaissance on this film project. And one of the people we met with was Colleen. And when she was giving her story about her healing, it was just so radical. I don't think you mentioned this, Anne, but we were told that her brain tumor was like bubble gum stuck on a on a tissue paper. That's why they couldn't do the surgery. It was extensive. And obviously she had this incredible miracle that Anne just talked about. So when we were sitting there, I asked her, I said, hey, Colleen, would you pray over my daughter? She's had a skin condition on her arm since the second grade. That was quite quite embarrassing. And it was also in different parts, like on her knees and stuff. And, and um, so much havoc was wreaked at the end of this meeting. She had to go. Like one of her pilgrims fell on the hill. Someone else was stuck in an elevator. And she was leaving. It was just as if the enemy did not want her to pray over my daughter. But she remembered. And she turned around, came back laid hands over Kiki and prayed over her, prayed over her word of knowledge too, with some things in Kiki's heart that that needed some healing. And she prayed over her. My daughter had such expectant faith that she went back to the hotel room, and I didn't know she did this, took pictures of all her skin issues that we um, have done everything for her whole life. And three weeks later, she took more pictures and said, mom, my skin, it's healing. And then three months later, after Colleen had laid hands on her, everything disappeared. It was just amazing that Kiki was able to experience a physical miracle while she was in Medjugorje. You know, I know this is going to sound fantastical, and yet it's a true story. Uh, there's a There was a, a priest friend of mine whose father was in Medjugorje. And he and his wife, so the the parents of this priest were in Medjugorje. And the wife kind of gently was nudging her husband to go to confession. He didn't really want to. He was like, honey, I'm fine. I don't need to go to confession. And she kept saying, honey, I think going to confession would be a good idea. Well, he refused. They were kneeling at the benches, kind of between the church and the confessionals, for those of you who've been to Medjugorje. This man, he was kneeling there with his eyes closed, All of a sudden, he opens his eyes and he finds himself in the confessional. He didn't get up and walk there. He just finds himself kneeling there. And he he looks at the priest and he says, how how did I get here? What happened? How did I get here? And the priest said, never mind. Let's get to your confession. (laughs) And he went to confession that day. And just to add, by the way, their son, their son, the story of his conversion, the story of his priesthood is amazing. He was a, he was married, very wealthy. Um, he hung out with celebrities. He was in global banking and PR. He, uh, I remember him telling me that um, when Hillary Clinton was running for office, he coordinated some of her earliest events for her first senatorial campaign. He launched Jennifer Lopez's clothing line. He was in that whole world of celebrity. And uh, when his wife, though, told him that she didn't want to have children, he divorced her, got an annulment. 
And he had everything that the world told, told him he needed. He had, he, as, he, as he put it, I had, a, I had a bank account that the world would you know, be envious of. I traveled to luxurious places, but he was deeply unhappy. And his mother, God bless mothers, his mother knew that he needed something spiritual and she invited him to go to Medjugorje. He, he had no idea what Medjugorje was, but he agreed to go just because he wanted to get away somewhere. He gets to Medjugorje, sees, as he puts it, it's this one horse hick town in the middle of nowhere. And his first thought is, I'm getting the heck out of Dodge first thing in the morning. He was going to leave the following morning because he hated it there. The following morning, he wakes up. He's overwhelmed with the sense of peace. And he decides he's going to stay. And he decides to go to confession, which is a miracle in and of itself. He goes to confession. At the end of that confession, the priest says to him, you are going to be a priest one day. And this guy who had not been to confession in 20 years, who had been living the high life, who had been living what the world told him was a, a successful, happy life, fully indulging in all of the worldly pleasures. He was like, yeah, right. That's never going to happen. But guess what? That man is a priest today. And not only a priest, he's an exorcist in his diocese. Miracles abound in Medjugorje. And there are those are just a few of the stories. There are so many more like that. That's amazing. And I think the moral of the story is to definitely start off with Jennifer Lopez somehow. <laughs> so I just want you to take to. something away from this. One of the most amazing experiences when we were in Medjugorje was walking to the St. James Church. It was around the time of the apparitions. And so the uh, church rings the bells when they believe the Blessed Mother has appeared and the apparitions are happening. So the, the church bells ring. So you kind of know, oh, it's the apparition. So as we were walking towards the church, there were these three large dogs on like this glassy knoll. And all of a sudden, they started barking and howling up, looking up at nothing and barking and barking. And we all stopped and were like, whoa, sounds like the dogs are singing. They were just like, oh, you know, just and looking up and just going crazy. And all of a sudden it stopped, they stopped and the church bells rang. And we were so struck that we're like, oh my goodness, you know, the, the Blessed Mother was coming in and the animals knew it. <laughs> we are all walking to St. James another evening and the church bell started ringing. Oh, it's the apparition. And all of a sudden our producing partner, Jennifer Tadlock stopped and she goes, my, my rosary. Now this is not the rosary, but she goes, oh, my, my rosary, it's turning gold. And we were like, what? And my auntie and I stepped forward and we all three held her rosary watching as the beads were turning gold. We It didn't just turn gold. We watched it literally. So here's a bead and we watched it go and we watched it turn gold. We all three stood there just in shock. <laughs> like, what is this? And my auntie had said, I think that that was for me because I was like, oh, these rosaries, poo poo, turning gold. Like, and, and, and I also think it, well, it was for all of us. It was one of those miracles and signs and wonders. And, and why did the rosary turn gold? I, I don't know. It was, it was amazing. And I actually heard that the gold color in Medjugorje has been studied and it's not actually earthly gold. It's some metal substance that is not found on earth. So I, I find that. Wow. I didn't know too. that. And, wow. and just to, to add a couple of random stories, I've been to Medjugorje more than once and and a friend of mine was in such debilitating back pain for two years. She had so much pain that got progressively worse to the point where she could not lie down at night. She had to sit up in bed all night because she could barely move with such terrible pain. She got on the plane, plane comes down. We get into Medjugorje and, and many pilgrims have experienced that once you enter the territory of Medjugorje, there's a peace that settles upon you. There are miracles that can happen. And that's when her back pain left. And it's been a decade now. And, and that back pain has never returned. But another entirely separate occasion, my friend saw, and oh, I guess, well, you mentioned uh, dogs, Holly. So there's a dog who had to relieve him or herself. And it was, it was very um, fragrant. And my friend thought, oh, I better move away. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, why am I telling this story? Okay, so you can't laugh at <laughs> Okay, thank you. And so in that moment, she smelled roses. It overpowered that smell. And then, of course, more important than all these things, that's just Our Lady saying, I'm here. It's always the soul, right? It's always about salvation. And so as uh, I've mentioned in the book, Full of Grace, my husband's stories in that book, so is mine, and, and our collective Medjugorje stories are in there. But he came back a different man. He would not pray the rosary before we went there. He was defiantly against it. And so he's prayed it every day for over 10 years since. So um, what I tell people is, you know, women, if you if you have a have a man, if you want to help him out, give him to what? another woman. <laughs> okay, thank God. You there you go. Like that. I didn't say it quite right. Okay. No, we, we understood. <laughs> okay, so back to the movie Between the Mountains. This Medjugorje movie is going to be a riveting adventure. And it's going to demonstrate to the global audience why Medjugorje is a supernatural worldwide phenomenon. Holly, how can people help this most vital, most important Hollywood project? Because we know that this is incredibly unique, that the gospel, that Mary can be inserted into Hollywood, be in the theaters, affect people's hearts, and change the world. You know, in fundraising, it's it becomes almost embarrassing. Like when people see Holly Carney, they're going to be like, oh, she's going to ask for money because I've been involved in charity work for so long. But one thing that gives me holy boldness is when I was a young NFL wife, my husband played in the NFL for 23 years and he was with the San Diego Chargers for 11 of those years. And I was approaching the owner's wife, Susie Spanos, for a donation for the YMCA. And I remember being very um, embarrassed about it. I don't even, it, you know, it's, it's awkward to ask someone for a gift or a contribution or a donation or an investment. And she said to me, because I think I apologized, I'm sorry I'm asking, but would you donate to the YMCA? And she said, Holly, they've done a survey nationwide on the number one thing that has to be done in fundraising. And I'm like, what is that? And she said, you have to ask. That's the number one thing you have to do. And so although it's, you know, um, a, a journey trying to raise development money. There's a reason for that. We're independent films. We're not big studio. We don't want anyone to control our message. We, we don't want anyone to change the message. Indeed, the reason we have all the support and collaboration of the relevant church officials is because we are going to work with them as the script is evolving and the, the screenplay is finished and, and we're going to collaborate with them in that way. Big Studio wouldn't do that. Big Studio would change and control the message. So as an indie film, we have to ask for, for uh, contributions and gifts. So people who don't usually play in the movie arena with those high level investments can still participate. That um, small contribution would give us the ability to take one of the producers from our production team over to Medjugorje. We want everyone on our production team to experience the graces flowing out of that land. And if you want to invest, um, that would obviously be a great blessing to us. There are minimum investments. When you reach out to me, we can talk about those on a Zoom call or a phone call or email. And also, you know, even if you can't invest personally, you might know someone that can invest and that would bless us with an introduction. And lastly, I always tell people, you know, there are three ways you can help. You can invest, you can introduce us to an investor, contribute or, or gift us, or you can Lastly, you can pray for us. We really need all your prayers covering Between the Mountains film in prayer because it's a spiritual battle doing such a mighty work for the Lord on a global scale. And we just ask that you pray for our entire production team for our protection and our safety and our health. If you could, we would like you to email us at betweenthemountainsmovie at gmail.com. If you would like to inquire about contributions, gifting, investments, or um, just even send us your prayers, that would be a blessing too. We also have a YouTube channel and we're so excited about it. And really the purpose of the YouTube channel is twofold. One, we want to have a place where people can come to follow the progress of the movie to see where we're at in, in making this. And secondly, we want to have a, a place where people can share their own stories, with their stories of their own experiences with Medjugorje. So please come and check it out. It's 
Between the Mountains movie on YouTube. So please subscribe, watch our videos, like, comment, all of all of the above. Yeah, and I want to add to that, if you have a testimony you would like to share, reach out to us again on Between the Mountains movie at gmail.com, and we will st- send you the instructions on how to do that. I'm just, this is a, a random comment I want to make here, but when you start to work for Mary of Medjugorje or for Mary, it's it's Mary of everywhere, right? Uh, it's so f- funny and terrible that we have warring factions of Marian followers in the church. Let's all get together, huh? She's all the same mama. And what happens is you start to meet people and there's all of these connections. So I met Anne several years ago, and Anne has a better memory than I do, but we were on a pilgrimage in Medjugorje, and I remember thinking, I like her. Okay, so years <laughs> later, here we are. What's that about? And Anne's in the process of writing several books on Medjugorje. You said you have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 books in your head right now that might come out. Is that correct? And so I came back yep. from the trip. That was my first book, Full of Grace, that has all my sins in it. This is about Medjugorje. And my trip there that Anne was on where I got all these healings and my husband was converted uh, more deeply. He'll, he'd kill me if I said that. And then, so this traveled into a book on men's conversion stories involving Medjugorje. This too is in Spanish of men and Mary, how six men won the greatest battle of their lives. So that is Medjugorje. And then in the warning book, there's testimonies involving Medjugorje. So, If anyone has read any of these, you may notice that Mary of Medjugorje is the instigator of where this all began. And Mm -hmm. also, my son was helping us with major technical difficulties. And as Anne was saying before this video, that's a great, great thing to have all these technical difficulties. And so my my son (laughs) had been praying for somewhere to go to get out of his dorm in Escondido, California. And then I just meet Holly and Holly says, I'm 15 minutes away from your dorm, come (laughs) to the beach. So see, these are little gifts from Mary that we get along the way. So I think that it's really vitally important to mention that we are in the biggest battle, perhaps since the word became flesh. And Souls are potentially and are already falling into perdition like snowflakes, as Teresa of Avila said. Mary didn't come for no reason. And God uses the media. God uses the media to reach souls. As one sits in front of a movie screen, they can either be saved or they can be brought the other way in an hour and a half so this is no this is no joke this is something whereby those of you watching this right now those of you who want to participate in the making of this movie that's going to be called between the mountains you have a chance to help save we don't even know how many souls if you just happen to be somebody who prays a lot if you just happen to have a chunk of money that you know oh my goodness I could die and this would be nothing. This would be gone. This would this this piece of of money that I have here could mean absolutely nothing or it could mean everything. Lord, what are you asking me to do? Are you asking me to help the mother of God help Jesus save her children in this way that clearly as these two wonderful women have said has been fashioned by the Lord, guided by Mary, planned out from the beginning of time. We're in a moment where this is happening now in real time. Please pray. Please ask the Lord, am I called to be part of an unprecedented event, a Catholic movie about our mother in Hollywood done by people who pray and who want to do it right and who are seeking official church guidance and have already received it. This doesn't make any sense unless it were the Lord. And and Anne and I in our next show are going to show how all these little objections to Medjugorje, oh, it's not really her, oh, it's demonic, oh, it's not approved. Well, guess who is doing that? If there were no persecution, 
it wouldn't be the Lord either. You have to have persecution if it's the Lord. Of the devil for how many years now? 41 years of the devil, causing conversions, causing confessions, causing vocations, causing fasting, prayer, Bible reading, more frequent reception of the Eucharist, and all these horrible, horrible things that the devil does. I mean, come <laughs> on, people. Can we figure that out? I'm sorry. I'm going to get upset. But the fruits are so obvious. And fruits don't last for 41 years. The devil is not capable of that. Yeah, he's powerful. Yeah, we're in terrible times. But he can't do that. There's one God and there's one Our Lady who can do that. So please get on board. And what, what I love, what I really love, Holly, is that you have made this so personal. How on earth are you going to support a Hollywood film by calling the producer on the phone and saying, hey, what's up? Yeah, please don't, <laughs> d please don't misuse that. She's, she's giving you her email and she's like letting you enter uh -huh. her life. So please protect her, Lord. But she's willing to personally, this lovely woman, Holly, in front of you right now, is willing to guide you step by step, hold your hand as to what's possible and what you can do. Okay, we don't know if we're, we don't know if we're going to die tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen. You know right now if the Lord is stirring your heart and you think a Hollywood movie about Medjugorje that could save souls. Okay, okay, I've been looking for just such an opportunity to help. I just want to add really what I think is one of the greatest miracles in Medjugorje. And it's, it's actually more a grace that is given that actually leads to miracles. And that grace, a, a priest friend of mine called it a grace of commissioning, a, a grace of being commissioned. And what this priest said is that so that millions of people have gone to Medjugorje. I can say that that was my experience, Christine. I think that was your experience. I'm guessing based on the ministry that you've been doing since then. Holly, I think that's your experience as well. When you go there, you are so profoundly touched and you are so changed in your in the deepest parts of your heart that you can't be silent about it. You, you need to tell, it's like there's this need to tell other people about what God can do if you open your hearts to it. And there are people all over the world who in their own communities, they leave Medjugorje and they want to bring a piece of Medjugorje home to them. So they've started prayer groups. They've brought, they've, they've gone to their pastors and said, can we have adoration? They've started rosary groups. They've, they've begun ministering more in their parishes. There are millions of these people around the world. And, you know, I know many priests who say to me that the 2% of people in my parish who do the 90% of the ministering in my parish are people that have been to Medjugorje and have experienced the grace of that. I can say I feel like I'm one of those. I feel that passion. I feel like I can't be silent. I have to speak. I have to tell other people about what I encountered, which is the transformative power of God. Well, I think I'm one of those people, too, that now is passionate and moved by Medjugorje. I didn't start out that way. Indeed, I was not a big believer of Medjugorje. I had conversed with a priest friend of mine years ago, and he had listed all the reasons why we shouldn't believe in Medjugorje. And whenever I met Jennifer Tadlock, our producing partner, and she had this, this idea of this movie in her heart, and she shared it with me, there was a Holy Spirit power that came over me. It was kind of like, I've explained it this way, where you see those cartoons of days of old and their eyes are doing these things because they're hypnotized. It was almost like that. And I was like, I must go to Medjugorje. I mean, it was almost like that. And so I met with her the next day. Five hours later, we got in touch with Anne. And if you know our story, we were in Medjugorje within three weeks. And I had such a transformation there myself with, with all that we experienced and the arguments that had been presented to me were completely crushed as to they're, they're nonsensical and they, they have nothing to do with anything that's going on over there, nothing at all. And I have to admit this, the reason I'm not going to list what those arguments were is because when we were in Medjugorje, Anne gently looks over at me and explains that the bishop that caused so much mischief and division, that divisive spirit about Medjugorje, she looks at me and says, oh, he died of tongue cancer. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm not saying nothing. 
So in 2010, Pope Benedict established a commission to investigate Medjugorje, and they completed their work in 2014. And one of the recommendations of that commission is that the first seven days of the apparitions be approved. That's a great step forward. That hasn't happened yet. The Vatican has not yet taken action on that recommendation. But it's so exciting to know that this commission, which did such a thorough examination of that first week, recommended that the first seven days be approved. So we went to Medjugorje knowing already that we had the support of the Franciscan Provincial, which was so exciting. Uh, the other thing that we wanted, we wanted to meet with the pastor of Medjugorje, Father Zvonimir Pavicic. We wanted to meet with uh, the archbishop, uh, with the apostolic visitor to Medjugorje, which is the Vatican-appointed apostolic visitor, the, the archbishop appointed by the Vatican to oversee Medjugorje, basically, Bishop Archbishop Aldo Cavalli. And each of those meetings were incredibly blessed, incredibly filled with the Holy Spirit, where highly laid out to them what the vision for the movie is, what the plans for the movie are. And we are keeping that secret to keep people in suspense. We're not going to talk about the specifics of what we're planning. But Holly laid that out to all three of these people. And all of them separately said, expressed great enthusiasm for the project and told us that they would, that they support it and that they would collaborate with us as much as they were able. So it, it was like the doors just flew open for this project. In addition to that, for anybody who's watching this, who's familiar with the history of Medjugorje, you will recognize the name Father Yozo Zovko. And Father Yozo was the original pastor of Medjugorje when the apparitions began. And um, if you know the history of Medjugorje, you know that he was only there for about two months after the apparitions began because he was such a passionate I was there the summer of 1981, so I can tell you I remember this. I know this from my own experience. His preaching was powerful. He preached with boldness, with power, with courage, with tremendous love. There was such a depth of spirit in that man. I remember I was 15 at the time. I remember hearing him preach. Sometimes his preaching lasted 45 minutes and you didn't want it to end. It was that powerful. I today want to mention... <laughs> In this woman, I see you, I see your family, I see our church. In that woman, I see you, you who lost your golden drachma. In that lost drachma, I see prayer. Kad je obitelj kršćanska izgubila molitvu, postala je siromašna, When nesretna, Christian jedna. family lost prayer, became unhappy, became poor. Evo gdje si izgubio igračku. Blessed Mother has appeared here in Medjugorje in order to help us to find the lost drachma of prayer in our lives. She appeared in order to help us as a mother helping her children, giving the children that what children lost in order to make them stop crying. Towards the end of that summer, he was considered such a threat to the communists who were in charge of Yugoslavia that they arrested him, they had a mock trial, and he was imprisoned for, well, he was sentenced to three and a half years where, in prison where he was abused and tortured. Uh, but after he was released from prison, he was assigned to a parish very close to Medjugorje, and people, millions of people flocked to, the, to that place to see him. So millions of people around the world who love Medjugorje, who've been there, know and love Father Jozo Zovko. And, really recognize him as a saint walking on earth right now. And we had the unbelievable privilege uh, of being able to spend not one hour with him, not two hours, six hours with Father Jozo Zovko at his monastery on an island in the Adriatic Sea. And one of the, it, there's so much there that was so incredibly powerful. But I think the moment that for, for all of us who were there, that was the most poignant, that was the most powerful and I can tell you, as, as the person who was translating, when he said this, I, 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 uh, I, I just got all emotional. I had to kind of regain my composure before I could translate what he said. He very poignantly looked at, Holly was the one mainly having the conversation with him, with myself translating. He looked at Holly very intensely, just deeply into her eyes. And he said, our lady has been waiting for you to make this movie. And, and we, all just, we all just cried. Because it was what we had felt, certainly, that this was 
something guided by the hand of Our Lady, born in the heart of Our Lady. But to hear this living saint say that was such a powerful moment and such a confirmation for us of what we had been feeling. When when that happened, the emotion that came over me was um, His Holiness and my lack of worthiness and my humility. And um, I felt, gosh, who knows who Holly Carney is? I'm but one producer in a sea of, of thousands. And, but God had a bigger plan in mind because when I got home two days later, I was in LA meeting with my producing partner, Lucas Foster, and he agreed just out of, it was a very brief conversation that he would produce this movie. And I'm like, now that is Our Lady. That is the Blessed Mother, because it would take a man of his stature to make a global movie on the scale in which we're aiming. And I want to pray for all of you that are watching this, that perhaps the Blessed Mother is moving through you and in your heart. If you are a serious investor and can help expedite the development of this film with your investment to get us there in record time. I feel there's a sense of urgency to get this movie made and to get this message out to the whole entire world. So if, if the Lord puts that on your heart or our lady moves you, I would love to talk with you and, and bring you in as a collaborative partner on this journey. And I really urge you to do so if, if the Lord is stirring your heart, because this is this is an urgent time. This is this is no joke. Um, even though we're we're joking a lot here, and um, and Anne is particularly funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My former career as a comedian. <laughs> exactly. So she Anne has changed her whole career to be with you today to to work on this movie. So thank you in advance, all of you who can collaborate on this most beautiful Hollywood effort. And could we close with a prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I ask you to bless this film. I ask you to bring all those people of goodwill, those people who have the heart of prayer, those people who have the financial means, those people who would like to invest or know of other investors to collaborate in this community effort. This has to be your church gathering together to save the world. Lord, you did not send your mother to earth for no reason. And this is but a step along the way to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may you find your way home.